OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Good afternoon, everybody, and I wish I was there uh, in Sacramento with you, but um, I'm Melissa Patterson, and I'm the Director of Garden Grove Adult Education. And I'm Elisa Takeuchi. I'm an ESL instructor and a newly CTE instructor for Garden Grove Adult Education. <laughs> and this is a, a shot of our uh, campus, and I just wanted to um, let you know that we are centrally located in the east portion of Santa Ana and we sit uh, alongside two very busy intersections and excited um, to say that we have a nine acre campus. So we're very large and lots of parking and this busy street, you can't see it, but um, this is the reason we'll get a little bit further in talking about our marquee and marketing program, but you can see it in the back. And this lovely tree that provided shade is not was not safe and they have taken that away. So we're excited to see that the front of our campus is very warm and welcoming um, to our community. Let's go ahead and talk about our staff. Um, as far as our teachers go, we have 29 part-time teachers and we are very fortunate now that our consortium has provided us with two full-time TOSAs, teachers on special assignments who are here to help us uh, navigate through the systems and they're here for our support and to really connect us with our um, other adult agencies in our consortia, in our consortium, and then all, all of our community colleges as well. We house um, ESL, ABE, HSC, uh, AWD, CTE, and we provide classes in the morning, the afternoon, and the evenings. And then also on Friday mornings, we have our citizenship classes. So currently, we serve adults between 18 and 80. And I'm proud to say we have a little over 1,600 students who are active. While this is down significantly from our pre-pandemic days, it is also increased significantly from that um, our first year in DLAC, which was the 2021 school year. And as you can see, the bulk of our students are in our ESL program, but we are very proud of our very large citizenship and our adult high school diploma program. And we also have an adults with disabilities program and we serve uh, 24 cities, and I, I counted up today 46 different zip codes uh, for make up the attendance of our community. And so because of that unique situation, we are actually in three consortia. So we are active adult educators in three different consortia. So we have to pull our weight in different directions to meet the needs for all three of those. So as you can see, one of our biggest um, goals and our transitions from pandemic to opening up our classroom is the high flex instruction. We've been very, very fortunate in that we were able to open up our school very early because Orange County went into the orange uh, tier very quickly. And so Garden Grove actually mandated that school go back in person. And so Melissa very much advocated to our district, our board, because um, adults are different. They're in a different situation. And so um, we have a lot of seniors in our class and they just weren't ready to come back into the classroom and we would have lost a lot of students. And so she advocated for us and they did allow us to have online classes at the same time. So Melissa was able to really look forward into our future and say, yes, we wanna do instead of hybrid, um, you know, at different times of blended learning, we were gonna do simultaneous instruction. So this was a, that was a picture of us at the very beginning where I had four in-class students from the remote students and uh, most of them were still stayed on as Zoom students. But then um, at, when the new school year started in September, then the tides kind of changed and now we have much more in-class students than we do Zoom students, but we are still offering the Zoom option because we just, you know, we still wanted to make sure that we broke down the barriers for our students and that they were able to choose their instruction model. Um, so when we decided to do um, 
DLAC, <laughs> when I decided to do DLAC, um, Melissa was a brand new director. Uh, she had just started, she, you know, we were right in the middle, we were right at the beginning of, pan of the pandemic. And I said, you know, I think this might be a really good program for us. And so I know it's going to be a lot of work. And, you know, being a brand new adult education uh, administrator, it was going to add on to her. And she said, nope, I'm right there with you. Because I think that it really helped her to organize and to really foresee how adult education works. She was an ESL, adult ESL instructor with me. Um, 18 years ago. And then she was also our night administrator, um, you know, once every couple of weeks. So she knew kind of how the process was, but then to be delved into it in a full-time position, it was really, really um, mind boggling, just the acronyms alone. She was <laughs> very much um, pushed back. And so being part of the DLAC program, uh, was really helpful for us to kind of sit back and say, what are the goals for us? What do we really need to do? One of the big things also was that we had many, many goals because it was a new transition for us into remote from remote to um, high flex. We had a lot of short term goals and we really couldn't see the future of two years. Like what is a two year goal to us? We need we had eight you know, one month goals. We wanted to finish these up very quickly. And so um, listed on the slide, you can see that, you know, a lot of these were what many of you have already talked about, you know, creating an orientation and um, increase our marketing and social media, and then really just kind of figuring out how does the high flex model work. And so through that, we really did a lot of trial and error. And we were really, really excited about this though, because of this, we have been able really to reach out to a lot of you who have had questions because you knew you were going to be doing this and, and kind of used us as the learning experience, you know, learn from our mistakes and our trials and errors. And we were able to do that through lots of presentations and a lot of trainings. Yes, and like Elisa said, even though DLAC was yet another acronym to add to the uh, pages and pages of acronyms, it's just been uh, really the best choice. And so when Garden Grove mandated that we open up our campuses, and part of that was how do we tell our students that we're here and that we're offering this high flex model? So we looked at our marketing programs and I saw in previous years, and printing alone a multicolored, beautiful brochure and sending that out, it was over $20,000 a year um, before we paid postage and all of those other things. And so I wanted to really look at a cost-effective way. And DLAC really guided us, opened this conversation and allowed us to say, you know, examine this and what are you doing? So we created this postcard and I really think it transformed uh, because it gave me a bigger budget to apply to other areas of marketing, uh, hence the marquee that I talked about. And I think that we had gone to the online registration. So we wanted to let our students know, look, you don't need this color brochure. There's, there's a safe way for you to access the, the catalogs. I also wrote personal letters to every single administrator in the district. And I sent these flyer, these postcards to them and then Elisa was so great about using her connections uh, prior to the pandemic. And we got the city of Garden Grove to actually put our link on their city website. So like all of you, once you were able to open up your doors and you know, invite students in, we had to figure out how do we orient our students so that they are the most successful that they can be on no matter what platform they chose, whether it was online or in person. So we created two different orientations. So we created the in-class um, uh, orientation, which at the time, because we were only online, we were only remote directly for one year. So from March to March. So March of 2021, we opened up our doors again. So we had a lot of health mandates. We had to do temperature checks. We had to do um, health screenings and things like that. So we had to, you know, let our students know the on the brand new students who were coming to class, you know, how that process works, so that they felt safe, they felt comfortable, and that you know we were meeting the agreements of the county. And then also with the on, our uh, online situation, most of our students they learned the hard way, like we did at the very beginning of the pandemic, and they kind of suffered through with us. But now we're having some new students has come in, you know, we really wanted to create an online orientation for them so that they knew how to, you know, even get into a Zoom account. How do they mute? How do they unmute? How do they stop video, start video, things like that. So that when they actually went into their classroom, they were already prepared. The, the teachers didn't have to take it upon themselves to go through that training with them. And that really, really helped us. And like 
all of you, uh, or most of you, we also went from a paper registration form that was in triplicates to an online registration form that was offered in three of our most used languages. And this really streamlined the process of um, uh, collecting data on registration as well, but it also freed up the clerks that I needed to be able to support our orientation program. So we, it was a pleasant surprise. And in addition to that, it allowed me to gather data that I began sharing with the teachers, really enlightening them to about the students who are coming and the process of, of registering our students. Our team has really grown uh, and benefited from the 102 course. I wanna say probably the most impactful part of that was the sessions on rubrics. And we really, uh, Elisa and I kind of grabbed that and took that and we not only use them to look at maybe future purchases, but I wanted to know already, I invested so much that we created rubrics to go to our staff and our students and ask them about the owl cameras, ask them about those online um, learning management systems like Burlington English, Edgenuity, Lexicon, and the expanded online portions of Ventures. And then what we did is we transferred those from paper rubrics into Google Forms. And that, as you know, when you use a Google Form, it allows you to really have powerful data discussions. And as I said, that's what I learned from the 102 course also was how to really help my staff be better data informed. And um, so if you'll see in the next slide, uh, when you take the Google form and you um, break it down like this, it gives us these nice pie charts. And so these became discussions. These are responses from the teacher's version, asking them about the OWL camera, but um, the student versions were similar. And if you can see the red and the blue are both the highest ratings, superior and strong. So we learned rather quickly that our teachers really preferred them for different reasons, but so did our students and I could share that information back and forth. So um, with the challenges and barriers that we faced, you know, in the last two years, instead of kind of writing this list down, we really sat down and reflected on the past two years, not just from the DLAC program, which really, you know, really helped us, but also when um, just looking back through the pandemic and all the things that we did, you know, the high flex, all of our goals. And so we asked ourselves some of these questions about, you know, are the changes that we made with the marketing, were they cost effective? Were they leading to the increased enrollment that we were hoping for? Um, did we make sure that all students receive communication uh, and attend orientation? Because that was one of our barriers there is that we would, they would register online. We would send them information about coming to orientation. And then a lot of them just wouldn't show up. We had a whole list and a lot of them just didn't show up and we didn't understand where that disconnection was from. Well, what we found out was that a lot of students said that they didn't receive our email because uh, they were going into their junk mail or their spam and they don't know, they don't have that access to understand, to check those things. Um, even for us, that that's, you know, sometimes we find things that we, you know, somebody has sent us a long time ago too. So what we did was to resolve that issue was that our liaisons would actually call them or text them. And because we know that they, they, the students will respond better on phone. Also, we wanted to make sure that the teachers felt supported and trained for this high flex. We start, we did a rollout. Um, some of the teachers, we had about eight um, that came in right away. And so eight of us um, practiced with it and played with it. And then we developed kind of a training system for the other teachers when we received all the other um, owls. And so that's been really helpful for them. So now um, our goals for year two is that we really wanted to um, incorporate what Melissa was saying about the surveys and um, also to continue with that. We, um, we were very um, fortunate, unfortunate that we had WASC and SIP and DLAC all at the same time. And so instead of really kind of doing different things, we really used um, our experience through DLAC to create these goals and to incorporate them in our WASC and in our SIP. And that really helped us a lot. We really stayed consistent in what we wanted to do for our agency. And so um, we, as an agency, we developed our new um, student learning outcomes, our SLOWs, and we now call them LEAD. And we really utilize that with all of our students that we really make sure that they understand this is what we, this is what we are doing for um, them. So our takeaways from DLAC. We really appreciated Dr. Porter's um, and, and Destiny's 
they encourage us to take risks. Um, the things we covered in 101 and 102 were great. The collaboration with our coach and Tustin Adult School, forever grateful for that. And of course, Destiny, Dr. Porter, all the OTAN leaders. And I think in our next slide, we have a couple more things to talk about. Um, I know we're running out of time. Uh, but thank you, um, Dr. Porter, really um, using and encouraging the strengths, identifying leaders on our campus, the um, effective, uh, sorry, highly effective team. <laughs> That's my own timer. <laughs> um, setting a culture for change and learning, handling conflict. Um, and finally, I really have to, I'm so excited about what we, I learned and what we're learning, going to continue to learn through cultural proficiency, just a greater awareness of our implicit biases, creating an inclusive and supporting campus. And, and that's really going to be taking us as we move forward. And so we just really want to wrap this up and say um, a huge thank you, of course, to our coach, um, Susan Coulter, and to Penny and Netta for all the support that they have provided for us and, all, of course, all of you. <laughs> Thanks.